Hello, hello, all of my knitted friends. Welcome to the Knit My Heart Sikkimityarta podcast about knitting, yarn, and all things crafty. My name is Maiwa, and I come to you from outside of Vasa on the Finnish West Coast. Uh, it's been a while since my last episode. February is such a short month, it just flies by. And um, I just want to start by thanking all of you who have found my podcast, who have uh, subscribed, who have uh, pressed the thumbs up button, button and uh, just uh, commented and introduced yourselves. And there are so many new subscribers and followers and viewers since my last episode. And I am just overwhelmed and really uh, happy to have to meet you all. And um, of course, uh, uh, that is because uh, I got a really nice shout out from Kia in at uh, Kia's, the Kia's Wood podcast, and also in Sweden, and also from Nonno Neolaya here in Finland. And uh, a lot of you have found found uh, me because of them. So a big thank you to Kia and Nonno as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a busy month. Um, a lot of both personally and, and at work and of course it's been quite a crazy time um, in the world generally and I think this last week probably will go down as corona week <laughs> in history because uh, this is the week when um, um, all of the Nordic countries have taken really drastic measures to uh, try and contain the spread of the coronavirus so our societies have basically been been shut down uh, in in many ways, um, all major uh, public events are cancelled. Uh, hobbies like football practice and Boy Scouts are cancelled. All um, travel is restricted, um, and uh, the stores are running out of toilet paper. <laughs> so, um, a really exceptional situation. But um, I do personally feel it's it's um, very much called for. I don't have a problem complying with any of these restrictions because it is I see it it is something that we're doing as an act of solidarity with uh, those that are weakest in our society and um, they also include uh, members of my own family my my parents and my husband's parents so um, this is temporary it will pass and if you are a knitter or a maker or a crafter or any, any kind um, Having a few weeks of just staying at home and making stuff isn't so bad, is it? Um, I'm not in quarantine or anything like that at the moment, but you never know when that might happen. So, um, so let's head straight into what I've been doing and what's off the needles. So. First off the needles is, of course, um, my sea blush sweater, also called the raspberry sweater. Um, it is finished and I love it. Um, let me just stand up. This is the yoke. Um, you can't see, I can't, it, it ends right at the hip and it is quite uh, fitted um, along the waist. And as you may remember, uh, last time I, I um, cinched it quite a bit. I decreased quite a bit around here to get it into a more fitted, fitted shape. And in general, I am very, very happy with with the shape of it and how it looks. Now I know that on the screen this looks really, really bright. It is not as bright as this, but red, uh, red colors are are tend to be they're they're difficult to photograph or to to shoot. So uh, the yarn it's made out of out of these two yarns. Um, these also look really bright now. It's the Holst Super Soft in the colorway Poppy and the host Titicaca in this colorway Camellia. Um, one strand of each held together. Um, 
uh, this project um, generally went really well. Um, the, the neckline, now that I've blocked it, is a little bit wide. I mean, that's perfectly fine. I'm just hoping that it won't stretch any more than this, because then it will sort of start falling, showing stuff that's underneath. Um, because this yarn doesn't really have a lot of bounce. Uh, so once you stretch it, stretched it or blocked it, it will pretty, it will not sort of bounce back in, into that shape. So when, when um, making, for instance, sleeves or ribs, ribbings, um, you need to take that into consideration that they're not gonna hold the fabric together very well. Um, this is a very lightweight sweater. It's less than three hundred grams, all, all in all. Um, and considering that I've actually used two strands, um, I have just lots and lots of yarn left because I I, I uh, calculated for a much greater uh, yarn amount of yarn. So I will I will be able to make something else in the raspberry colorway or uh, new ends. And um, this is also quite a dense. I've knit this on fairly small needles. I'll put the deta details up here because now I can't remember. Maybe three mil millimeters, and um, and and it's quite a dense, dense fabric, um, which means that it doesn't have a great deal of, of um, drape. And also because it's so light, it doesn't have the weight to hold it down. So I do find that when I wear it. Or like for instance on the sleeve now, it tends and it, it and it sort of crawls up a bit. It tends to stay that way, and also around the waist. So you have to kind of pull it down, keep pulling it down, which is a bit of an an issue, I suppose, when you're uh, out and about and moving. Um, but uh, that's those are just things you gotta take. <laughs> that's that's how this yarn and this fabric behaves. So. But all in all, I am happy that I finished it. I am happy to be wearing it. It's not the softest of yarns, but I, I can still wear it against my skin without too much discomfort. I'm, I'm really happy with it, with it in that way. Um, and um, it's really warm. I can really feel um, this, this room is perhaps quite warm now because the sun is, is shining in, through. Uh, but yeah, a finished sweater for 2020. Yay me! We all like that, don't we? Now the size. Uh, I could say something about the size. I <laughs> uh, when I pick a pattern, I usually make. I start making the smallest or the second smallest size. I think with this one, I started the yoke with the second smallest size. Um, I'm generally, I'm a, I'm a petite person, but um, once, then I just make all sorts of modification and the stitch count just goes all over the place. Um, so I wouldn't be able to say what size this really is. The yoke uh, and the sort of instructions for the increases, for instance, with the yoke um, are, follows the size uh, small or second small size. Uh, but then the rest of it, that's just my own. Uh, my own stuff. This one also has short rows at, at the back, or at the back of the neckline to just create a bit more depth at the front, which I think works really well. Overall, in, in all, it's, it's a lovely pattern. I can highly recommend it. It's the Seedlish sweat Sweater by Andrea uh, Ramya. Yup, that's that. Um, let's see. These were also on the needles the last time. They are uh, the Woodland Walk Socks by uh, This Handmade Life. Uh, Olivia, I think her name is. And um, these were the, the February sock in Kia Sports um, Free Socks 2020 Challenge. So a lot of people have knit these, and I think that they are really, they're really pretty, very uh, nice pattern to knit, very enjoyable, uh, just a great flow throughout the pro process, and um, 
very very good instructions. Yeah, just very uh, a simple but but very good looking pattern. And uh, the yarn is um, Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock yarn. So these kind of flew off the needles and will go into my sock box for 2020. So I will be keeping them until the end of the year and they will be worn next year. Um, now the the, um, the Free Socks 2020 challenge, the, the sock for March um, is a, um, is it called Lemione sock, I think? It has a bit of a cable honeycomb pattern on it. And I wanted to make that, I wanted to participate in the challenge and I wanted to make it, but I didn't actually have uh, a solid colored sock yarn that was um, suited for that project. I mean, can you believe that? I have lots and lots of, of um, um, scrap yarns that are solid colors, but none that were enough to actually make a whole pair um, of, uh, of socks, of solid socks. And since the kind of idea is that you knit out of stash, I felt, well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll skip that one. And then I'll, I'll try to make something out of my, my scraps instead. And I will be showing that in just a second. But another pair of socks that I didn't have on the needles, even uh, the last time, which I've knit since, are these. Uh, I joined the Handmade Sock Society season three, which is by Helen Stewart, which is basically a subscription where you buy um, the su subscription and then you get um, six socks pa sock patterns and one each month. For the, fo um, the first one was in February and then you get for the fo following months, one, one um, pa pattern each month. And the first, first uh, pattern was these socks the uh, luminary sock socks and oh uh, i i hate love these they they are crazy they are incredibly sparkly um the yarn i don't know let's see if i can get just a little bit of detail it's very hard with all the sparkles i will just take one off the blocker and see if you can see the the pan, front panel that has these little sort of knots or little stars, but this is very hard to film. They have these little knots or star stitches basically, uh, which run like a panel along the front. And then there's this little eyelet, eyelet pattern that goes down the sides. Now, <laughs> I had the same problem with these ones. I didn't really have a solid yarn to knit them with and I didn't want to just go out and buy a yarn just for making them. But I did have this crazy uh, sparkly yarn and since they're luminary and they're the, sort of the theme of, of the whole um, uh, series of, of patterns is atmosphere. I felt, well, you know, a sparkly sky, a sky blue um, yarn that really is appropriate in many ways. And the yarn the yarn looks like this. It's long, long yarns, um, mille colori, something. <laughs> I'll, I'll put put it up here. Um, and I actually bought this um, around Christmas or before Christmas because I wanted to make Christmas balls. You know, I needed Christmas balls with a bit of sparkle in them. And I made one ball and then Christmas was over and I had all this yarn. So I thought, okay, I will try and make a pair of socks with this yarn. Um, so, I mean, uh, the yarn was a bit difficult to knit with because it's basically a singles yarn. It, it does have a, some uh, nylon or polyamid in it. So it, it should be, uh, should have some, some strength in it, but, mm. Well, you kind of get the idea, I guess. It's not a, it's not a high, it's not a twisted applied 
applied yarn. It's basically a singles yarn, which means that it probably won't be very durable. Um, and, and it was a bit tricky to knit with. I think I had to try uh, try with four different needles before I could uh, actually get a needle to work with it because it would just split like crazy. And of course, the pattern is a bit obscured by by the sparkles, but it does look better in real life than on pictures. These sparkly yarns are incredibly hard hard to photograph or to film. And it's uh, it's very or it's uh, a bit like a gradient or I don't know what do you call this. It's not stripy. It's not variegated. It's it's a fade. So it, it has these different nuances, uh, shades of color. Now, this one here is a bit like, what? Where did you come from? <laughs> and I was, I was kind of expecting it to repeat because this is the one I knit first. And then I was expecting it to come to repeat sometime along this other one, but it didn't. So now I have this really, really shocking blue uh, on one sock and not anywhere, nowhere else. So, uh, but I wasn't gonna rip it because, well, oh, this yarn, you don't wanna rip it. So, these were a fun project. I knit them really fast. The pattern is lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, the yarn, well, we'll see <laughs> how that wears and and, it, and yeah. So, um, I could very well knit this pattern again in a different yarn and maybe I will do that sometime. So, yeah, but those are my luminary socks and from the Handmade Sock Society. What else? Well, I think that's all. Um, that's off the needles for now, actually. So what is on the needles then? Well, plenty. Plenty is on the needles. We can start with this one. I had started this the last time. This is um, silver lining. The silver lining um, sweater, but I am making it into a cardigan by Jennifer Steingess, Knit Love Wool. And I have finished the body. I've made, uh, there's a ribbing at, at the bottom and a kind of uh, bind off that may has you first do one one um, row of just uh, knit uh, stock in it or knit stitches and then you bind off. We'll see how that works. It it may work just fine once you actually start wearing it. It does. It it looks neat, but it has it it just curls a little bit right now. Um, but. Um, yeah, I am happy with this so far. Uh, I think it will be really nice and cozy and warm once it's finished. Um, the yarn, as you may remember, is this Fin Sheep yarn that's been in my stash forever and ever, which I have I have no label or name or anything for it. It's 100% wool, it's made from, from Finnish sheep. Um, roughly a uh, the, um, DK weight, I think. And then I'm holding one strand of, of this, um, oh, let me just check, oh, uh, Sylvia, Wetterhof Sylvia lace yarn together, just to give it a little bit more, more life, the fabric. Now, of course, um, this was, um, oh, sorry, I just dropped it. Uh, this was a stash yarn that I had, and of course I ran out. <laughs> I ran out of it, and so I had to order some more. Uh, luckily, they still had it in the same colorway, so now I have more stash yarn of this. But um, but I did, I did I, there was no way I, it was gonna, gonna last. There's no, this, this other yarn, this will go a long way, that's no problem, but this one I had to buy some more. So I need to start the sleeves. This has been a bit on, on hold for, for a bit now, um, but I will start the sleeves just now and I'm sure that will go pretty fast once it's finished. Uh, and the gray yarn is the Rauma Finul 
and that's also held together with a lace a lace yarn which is Grignasco uh, merino silk and um, a silver silver color which doesn't really show but it's there um, really like the pattern yeah uh, it's now that spring is coming these these kind of projects start to feel a bit like oh this is warm this is heavy I want to knit something lighter um, but I will still finish it and and it will be worn worn in in the autumn if not before um, now I also uh, started speaking of, of spring I started a summer a summer knit a summer uh, sweater or a top um, this is a bit tangly now let's see <laughs> we oh this goes just every um this is the coral top by Helga Isaker, a Danish designer. And and this is the front. Um, it has this sort of this shoulder uh, straps. Goodness me, this is really hard. These shoulder straps that you knit first, and then you continue with the body, and it has this bias. Um, panels on the front and, and a stitch, a, a slip, slip stitch that just goes around the middle, down the middle. Um, so the shape of it will be, the straps will go like this and then the body will run like that and it will meet the back around here and then you can, and then you continue knitting in the round. Once you get that far, I've also I've knit this far on the front, and then I've also started on the back. Um, so the, this is the back. Um, so um, we'll see if I have enough stitches for the back. It looks a little, just a little bit narrow at the moment, but I will knit a bit. I have to knit a bit further before I can actually measure it properly. Um, this is knit in um, Sunnes Tunlina uh, yarn. Uh, <laughs> I have two two balls for the back and the front. It's this uh, teal teal colorway, and then the stripes or the contrast color is this kind of aqua. Uh, and this is a cotton viscose uh, linen blend. It's very fine. I would say it's a fingering weight fingering weight yarn um, and I'm knitting it on needles 2.75 I think yes so uh, and it's a bit hard on the hands so I you need to take a lot of breaks when when you knit with this kind of yarn but it's I, I really like the the color combination and I really really like the model I will actually put a picture up here of the project that has inspired me that the project on Ravelry that that I have um, seen using this pattern and that I've really been inspired by. Now the pattern, um, I would like to say that it's a good pattern, but it isn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not really making it according to the pattern. I'm more, I have more looked at the pattern and just been inspired by it. Um, like I said, it's by Helga Isager. Uh, it's in a book. Oh dear, I don't remember the name of the book now. Um, I will I will look that up and and but it's also available on Ravelry uh, from various uh, places actually. Um, it doesn't have any measurements, for instance. It does say it does give you the gauge and it gives you the sizes. It has only two sizes, um, and it but it doesn't uh, but it it has no chart like a schem or schematic with with the pattern with the measurements so you're not you don't really know um, what you're looking for what, what what size will this actually be once <laughs> or what measurement bust measurement for instance will it have once it's finished because there's nothing in that pattern so um 
I, I'm basically just using the idea of the pattern and, and just trying to make it up as, as I go. It's, it's not very difficult if, if you kind of understand the construction of it, but it's not something that uh, I would expect someone who may maybe is less experienced would uh, understand and be able to make with success. So that's a shame, but it's an old, it's a fairly old pattern. I think the book came out more than 10 years ago. Um, uh, so, and there are lots of, lots of projects on Ravelry where you can get lots of good information about it as well. So it's, it's really pretty, it's a really pretty summer top in my, in my opinion. So, um, I'm hoping it will be a success once I finish it. Um, yeah, and then, um, socks, of course, I'm knitting socks. And here is uh, a sock that I just finished yesterday. I've been working on it for a while, as you can see, it's color work all the way, so it does take a bit of time. Um, and I just had to block it immediately because I just wanted to see how the color work opened up and, and the shape and, and everything. Because when you knit color work, it tends to just scrunch up and, and get a little bit ugly. But once you, once you wash it and block it, it will be really pretty. And so this is winter is coming. <laughs> winter is coming. Well, it isn't coming. It never came this year, but it's still... Well, the, the Winter is Coming pattern by Anna Makela, and it's from her book. I have the book here. Uh, it's from her book, Katze Kanta Paihin. And I will just show you. This is uh, her project shown. I think it's really, really pretty really really pretty um, of course it's it's quite a complicated pattern when it's i'm just gonna remove it and just let you show you the sort of swirly dirly which is uh, happening on the front here um, and then that's the bottom the bottom of the foot and then it has this heel construction where you um, oh, where you sort of make a wedge or a gusset um, down here and then you make do, do some uh, what do you do you do some increases or yeah well you turn the heel and you make increases um, down here. Very clever. Um, a bit fiddly to do and um, these stitches here are, are a bit loose because it was quite difficult actually to keep the tension here and the color work here at the same time. So those are some, some skills I need to, to sort of practice a bit more. But all in all, um, I love the pattern. Um, it's not a beginner's pattern because it has like 10 different charts that you need to follow for the different sections of this, um, of this pattern. And um, um, it's not always completely easy to know which, um, which chart goes where and where do you kind of start it and how, um, I wouldn't want to write these kinds of patterns myself. Jeez, it would be really, really hard. And I also, and I even made a mistake. I've made several mistakes, but one of them was I actually put these gussets here. I placed them the, the wrong way around. The one on the left goes on the right and so on, because I couldn't, I didn't realize until I was halfway through that I also, I actually have the, the increases, which are down here. I have them on the wrong side. They should be here which means I've kind of switched places for, for the, for the, the gussets themselves. Well, and so 
um, this this pattern is only available in the book and the book is in Finnish so unfortunately if you're you're not a Finnish speaker or can read Finnish uh, it may be a bit hard hard for you to actually get to grips with with this kind this pattern but it is very it's a it's a lovely book in general I think uh, this this book is really really has such a, such nice patterns. They're all more or less color work patterns, I think. Um, for instance, or have some element of color work. But then she has all these interesting heel constructions. Katsakantapäihin actually means look to the heel uh, or to the heels. So um, she does patterns. So she does heels in a number of different ways. And as I said, they're not available as a single patterns on Ravelry or anything like that at the moment. But um, if you're a Finnish, if you're a Finnish speaker, or or if you can read um, charts and, and kind of figure figure things out, um, um, this is really a, a very nice, um, very well worked book, pattern book. And. Then I have another pair of socks. Now these are um, from leftovers scrap socks. Since I really try now to to use what I have um, or to try and use up this little bits and pieces, because it's they tend to just accumulate otherwise. I, I, um, I am once again using Casting Balkes. Oh, let's see now, where is that book? Casting Balkes book, um, which is here also in its finished translation, but it's available in German at least, or, and maybe in English as well. I would not, I'm not sure about that. But she has made several, several sock books. Uh, with the same type of, of pattern, where there are only four, all of these patterns are four, four stitch repeats, and you can pretty much combine them in any way you like. And she combines them in all sorts of ways in, in this, in her box. Um, this is, um, this is the pattern that I'm following. It's sock number 14. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if you can spot the difference. Um, as you see, I've started from, from the toe. This is a toe, I've made them toe up. But I've knitted, I've knitted um, the chart from the cuff. Now, if um, I didn't tell you that this was been delivered, you wouldn't know. Would you? Uh, but the fact is that I didn't even notice until I was about here that, hey, this is going the wrong way. I am knitting these the, the other way around, upside down, kind of. I mean, of course, since I started them, they, the pattern is written cuff down. And since I started them toe up, I would have, of course, had to just turn the chart upside down and then I could have, could have gotten things in the right place. But I didn't notice. I didn't. I, I mean, I even looked at the book, at the the sort of the cuff, just to check how the pattern was that I was getting the pattern right, and it didn't occur to me that I'm actually knitting them the wrong way around. Hmm. That's what happens when you're multitasking. I was doing this at the same time as I was uh, doing some research, watching some stuff on on the computer for for a job assignment, and I was just knitting away at the same time. Mm -hmm. But hey, it doesn't matter. Um, they look just as good this way, and I can just place the patterns in any way I like. Can I? Now I know, I noticed that there is also a, there is a knit along for for that Kerstin Balke is hosting for uh, for March uh, with her socks. Um, so I thought, well, I will just enter these into the knit along, and I will just say that they are my upside down socks. Uh, the yarns that I'm using are um, a host of different leftovers. This blue here, or this um, turquoise, is Koigu. 
the KPPM um, uh, kind. <laughs> um, it's a yarn that I have uh, repurposed from an, an, an old sock project where I've worn through the heel, but I just, I still love the yarn so much that I wanted to, um, to use the rest of it that wasn't, that wasn't worn at all. So I have knit socks out of this before, and now I have the scraps that I'm using, using for this one. I think it's really, really pretty. Turns, I like the way that the variegation shows in the pattern. Um, the brown stripe, that's some opal or regia, just basic uh, solid sock yarn. That has been... Uh, I'll come back to that in just a second. The white base here is a um, Lankava a Finnish, um, just basic undyed sock yarn. It's actually... I bought it for dyeing myself, but I haven't dyed it. It's just this natural cream color here. Um, and this pink is a um, Arakanya uh, Ranko, Ranko yarn, or silk yarn. Also an old one that I've had in my stash forever. I have just little bits of it left, but I think it will be enough just for this pair of socks. Now, um, now the, I'm, I'm getting close to the heel. Um, I think I just finished, will finish this panel here and then there will be a few stripes and then the heel will, um, the, the turn of the heel will, will come. And this, um, I want to use this color, this brown uh, dark color here for the heel. Now it's a short row heel. Now this yarn is also a repurposed yarn that I've had in some socks before and I and it's quite it's a bit not so um, so uh, durable in, anymore I think and so I'm thinking that I really would like to uh, reinforce the heel somehow to just make it more durable uh, with this yarn um, and I'm not I've been thinking a lot about that how could I do that um, I don't want to hold it double because that will make it too thick. Um, one option would be to actually use some sewing thread to just, um, with it, just hold a, a strand of sewing thread together with it. I have done that sometime in the past and it worked. Um, I did, I do think that that heel was, was a more durable one because of it. Um, Another option, which I'm, I've been thinking about, would be if I could find um, a lace yarn that had quite a bit of silk in it, because silk is quite durable, um, and you could hold a strand of silk or a silk blend together with with this uh, with this sock yarn um, to just make it a bit more durable. Mm. Possibly even the, the one that I'm, this uh, Sylvia that I've been using for, for the silver lining, silver lining sweater. Hmm. It's a possibility. Um, we'll see what I think, what I come up with. In general, that just got me thinking that I would really like to find um, a way to use not just these uh, blend polyamide and nylon blends for socks. I mean, generally, if you buy sock yarn, it has wool or merino, and then it has 20 or 25% of polyamide or nylon. Uh, but I would really like to find a yarn or a way to combine yarn so that I wouldn't have to use these plastic compounds in the yarn. Um, because um, I, I really, I like to think about things, the life cycle of things, and when, and when I, I use socks just every day, all year round, basically thin socks, I use them all, all the way, all the year round. And uh, um, they wear, I will wear out many pairs of socks in a year. And I really hate to throw things out and know that they will have to be burnt or um, they, they will end up as landfill or something like that. I would really, really like my clothing or my my the stuff that I have to discard to be biodegradable and kind of 
go back to nature in some form. And if, if, you, if my sock yarn was um, completely uh, natural in that it was wool or, and silk, for instance, or wool and, and some other um, biodegradable uh, material, I could just compost them myself in my garden and they would be turned into soil. Um, so um, I've been just playing with the idea that maybe I could just, uh, if I could find uh, a, a lace yarn uh, that I could use uh, together with, say, Rauma Fenol or some other um, just 100% wool yarn, fingering weight wool yarn, uh, that I could make my own sock blend and uh, not have to rely on the plastic. Ah. Components. I know that there are sock yarns out there, for instance, that have started using tensile, which is a, a wood derivative, derivative, derivative ooh, um, and, and that is biodegradable. So that's a good start. And I'm hoping that as technology and science develops you know, over the years, that we will get we will get rid of the plastic components in, in our yarns and go completely natural. Okay, well, that was a bit of philosophical uh, thinking. Um, oh, I realize now I've, I forgot to say what, what the yarns were in, these, uh, in this one. Um, I have them here. Um, the, the sort of gray, light gray or um, natural color is the Ul, uh, Anki by Ulrike yarn that I bought at the ne at the Neolovasa event. Um, it's a BFL, BFL um, polyamide blend. And it has, it ha it's just slightly variegated. It has these different shades of, of silvery gray in it. Uh, and the other one, or the purple one, um, this is uh, Handu, uh, hand, hand dyed by Handu, which is, who's a Finnish Finish um, in the dyer. Um, I've um, this was a 50, 50 gram skein, and I've divided them into two. So this is what's left from the first stock, and I have another one for for the second one. And I think these go really well together, and and very fitting for this winter is coming theme. But you can make uh, these in a different colorway uh, or different colors, um, different shades of green, for instance, and you could call them spring is coming or summer is coming. So. Yeah, that's that. Now I think um, I think the, those were all my projects um, that I'm that I have been working on for now. I want to show you just a few other things um, before all this Corona stuff started happening. I ha I was able to attend quite a few social uh, knitting events. Um, I went to a, a thing called Garn Iran, which was a, a sort of a, a day of crafts um, held here in, in a local a local um, Medborja Institute. I don't quite know how to explain that, but it's basically a day of, of workshops and classes uh, around different uh, fibery crafts. And um, um, it was a great way to meet meet some uh, from some people uh, who are into the same stuff and also to learn there were classes that you could learn new techniques and one of the things that I did was actually I attended a class on make on crocheting in mandalas um, and this is what I made uh, and this is sort of a, um, a trivet for for you know for for your pots and pans, and um, and this is just um, I, I I just crocheted this and then I I made it so that it could that it fits tightly around the edge of this this trivet and then it's just sort of ornamental. Um, but this crocheting mandalas was really really fun. Um, I'm not a big crocheter in in general, but this was a, was really really fun. Um, and it was a great way to use up scrap yarns. And so I got so excited that after I got home, I, I just dug up a few more patterns and I did a few more mandalas just uh, out of different 
different uh, patterns and different... I'm sorry, I don't have the patterns here now. I will try and put them up, up here as well. And this one I haven't finished um, weaving in all the ends yet, so this one is a bit wobbly. Um, but yeah, they're just kind of fun ways to, to use up, up scrap yarns. Now, I'm not sh exactly sure what I'm gonna do with them. Uh, I do like to make things that have a, a purpose or a, some kind of use. Now, you could, of course, make these into trivets as well. Um, I don't have any more of those cork ones, but I saw that in a shop that I went to recently, they were actually quite cheap, so you could perhaps make them into gifts and just give them away, gift some. Um, but yeah, this was a fun way to use up some, some thicker yarns because I have lots and lots of leftovers in the sort of DK worsted weight. I actually brought, I bought the, <laughs> brought the bag with me. Like these are all my leftovers in those weights. And I don't really use these for socks, for instance, because I hardly ever make socks in, in the, those, the thicker weights. Um, so when these are left, so it's like, what do I really do with these? But crocheting mandalas is a good way, good way uh, to use some of it. And, and, and also just to, to try different color combinations. Um, it, you just get very different effects um, by using different colors next to each other, which is, it's really fun to play, play with color that way. So, um, yeah, that was just kind of, kind of fun. Um, I've also uh, had the, the chance to attend um, a few other knit meetings and knit nights and hang out with my knitty, knitty friends, so I that has been a lot of fun. Now, we haven't cancelled our local knit night uh, just yet. Um, there's just a few, few of us there, so we will try and, and um, get together uh, as long as we're all standing. <laughs> Um, and just enjoy the art of making making stuff and just being together for a little bit. Um, I have made some purchases. Um, this yarn I I bought at the Garden Iran um, class day. This is um, oops, Johanna's Garden. She is uh, she's my local dyer. She lives quite close to here and she dyes lots of lots of lots of lovely stuff this is the, the uh, merino nylon uh, sock blend uh, in the colorway champagne and I'm this is I suppose this is going to be a base uh, a base uh, yarn may, in maybe some color work socks or or something like that. I'm trying to, to collect some of these lighter yarns, like I said, because I have lots of colorful and dark yarns, but I don't have a lot of these lighter ones. So, so um, this was really pretty. Um, and then I I made a trip to to a, a local yarn shop, which is which where I've never actually been before. It's not quite here in, in our city. It's in the, the neighboring <laughs> uh, small town. And um, and they carry Arweta, which we don't have actually in any any of the yarn shops here in Vasa. So I just went there and I, I just stocked up and a little bit of Arweta uh, for some sock projects in the future. Um, so yeah, and um. um a little bit um, of the plans, uh, of, of plans that I have um, for projects that I, I, I kind of want to, thinking that I want to make. Uh, one project that I already have the yarn for and that I've had for some time, I just haven't started it yet, is the Arboreal sweater by Jennifer Steingas as well. I'll, I'll put the picture of that pattern up here. It's one that I've been wanting to make for a long time. Um, and as you see, it has these leaves um, and uh, these kind of, um, I, I'm really into these kind of floral organic uh, uh, patterns with or shapes. And, and this one is really, really one that I, I'd like to, 
to make and I have I bought bought some yarn for that as well at, at some point when I ordered yarn from Holst I bought some yarn for this one as well so this is the Holst super soft um, in the colorway Marlin and this is I think the colorway Pussy Willow uh, and I'm thinking that I could use these two for that for that sweater um, so that might be once I finish um, uh, perhaps the silver lining sweater I could cast on uh, for this. Um, it's a, the pattern, uh, the yarn is a bit, little bit finer or th thinner than called for in the pattern so I would have to make it, some recalculations there but that's what I basically do anyway so hmm. that might be some time in my future. Another pattern, um, that's also a sock pattern, um, that I'm thinking about. I have one more book here. Uh, um, it's from this book, Tiina Kuu, Tuhansien Villa Sukkienma. Another Finnish book. Uh, fin we have many Finnish designers who design socks. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and both this book and the other one, the Anna Makila book, were, were published last year and they both uh, are dedicated to socks. And then of course we now have the Lina book, uh, 52 Weeks of Socks, which is out, which I haven't purchased uh, because I actually like the socks in these two books more. So, um, um, but there's a pattern here. Oh, let me, let's just see if I can find it. Um, oh which I'd like to, there are many patterns here that I'd like to make, but this one, um, because it kind of goes uh, well with the arboreal theme. Uh, this one also has leaves um, on it, and I'm thinking I could make it more in sort of spring, spring summer colors. This is, it's called Kesasuksun Vaihtu, which means sum, summer turns into autumn. Or summer turning into autumn. Um, that that's one pattern. Then and possibly from these two, um, these two Arweda colors. Um, so those are just kind of um, dreams and plans um, that I'm I'm thinking about. I as you see, I'm a lot. I'm very much into color work at the moment. I I really really enjoy that. Um, so yeah. Now, I also, um, in this um, episode, just wanted to share just a little bit of knitting nostalgia. This is a toy that I knit ooh, very, very, very many years ago, or um, maybe around 2007 or something like that. Um, it's, it's a soft ball. <laughs> it's knit out of cotton yarns. Um, and it, it's, it has these sort of um, one, two, three, four, five pentagons <laughs> um, that, that you uh, knit and then you, you don't have to sew them. You, you kind of join them um, as you, you knit one and then you join the next one along along the edge because you knit them from the the outside in so you don't have so you don't have to to sew them uh, together uh, you just um, you just go for the next one and the next one and you can even weave in the ends as you knit so there's very little finishing um, this is the Dodi the Dodi pattern it's from Nitty the, the Nitty the, the free knitting magazine uh, online um, and this was, um, was quite a popular patterns back in well something like 2007 and I made this for my my children when they were small now the funny thing <laughs> about this is that my older son uh, he just turned 16 this week and he still plays with this one <laughs> I just I just had to show it for that reason now he's a footballer uh, his, his football is his thing 
and and this one has been around all his life and of course when you have a footballer in the house you have to have some fairly strict rules of no footballs in the house i mean no sort of kicking because you will end up with broken windows and furniture and all sorts of stuff if you start kicking footballs in the house uh, but this is a perfectly footballer safe um, a ball um, because this is soft he can kick it around he can juggle you know with it <laughs> he's um and and he still does and he uses it to torment his little brother by throwing it at him and you know no harm is done to anyone so if <laughs> if you're looking for um a really good um, gift for a child that will last throughout the decades or if you um or just you know a cuddly toy for for someone uh, small your your own or somebody else's and or you, or if you want to use up scrap cotton yarns this is really a really good project for that now this one is in desperate need of a wash because uh, it has been around for about 13 years or so uh, but it's still looking perfectly fine and I, rem I, I actually had looked this up in my in my Ravelry page and I, it said there was a little story there saying I knit an, um, a different color first thinking that that would be my prototype uh, project and, and that I would keep that one for, for my family and then I knit this one which was the second one um, uh, and I would gift this but then my son, my older son, saw this one and he wanted this because it was so colorful so I ended up keeping this one and gifting the first one because it had more muted colors and he didn't like that as much. So he wanted the bright, the bright colors. So And I, I ended up, I knitted I think about four or at least four of these and gave them to, to friends that had children at that time. And it was really, really appreciated uh, gift on, and a fun project to make. So a flash from the past but still going strong. Okay, guys, I think that's about it for now. Um, like I said, I really, really appreciated um, all your comments and all your introductions in the comments. So please, please uh, just feel free to ask if there's anything you feel that I uh, need to clarify or if I've met, uh, forgotten some details, which frequently happens. Or, or, or just to say hi in the comments. Um, I really, really love to hear from you. Um, and uh, if you want to see more of this, then you can hit the subscribe buttons and and uh, just join me for, for my knitting journey. And um, please, please stay safe, uh, wash your hands, <laughs> and keep knitting until I see you the next time. Bye.